Hello everyone, this is Professor Patterns, and in this video we're going to be covering a really crucial tool that's going to help you for your development, and it's known as Git. Now this video is for complete beginners, so if you've never heard about Git or never used Git before, don't worry because this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and get started. So imagine if you were writing a book. What's your workflow going to look like? Well, you'll write some stuff, and then once you're happy with it, you're going to save it. Then you'll write some more, and then save, write some more, save, write some more, save, write some more, save. Right? You want to keep making sure that this document gets saved once you're happy with how the book's coming along. That is exactly how Git works. Every time you hit save, we refer to it as a commit. So how it looks like in coding is this. So here I am on my VS Code interface. It's on a completely empty folder. Now, to start off, what I'm going to do is go to source control. And then here, I'm going to initialize a repository. So basically, all this means is that VS Code is going to keep track of all of the different files and any changes to the files that we make. It's kind of like autosave. So let's initialize an empty repository here. And I'm going to start off by creating one file. I'm going to call this file code.py. And here, I'm just going to put in some basic code. It says it's a pet generator application. So once I'm happy with this, I'm going to hit Control S to save. And as soon as I do that, we'll see that automatically it detected that there was a change in this file. So how do I run this? Well, I'm going to open this in Integrate Terminal. And then here, I'm just going to type in some code like streamlet run app or code.py. And this is going to pop up like this. So I'm happy with this code so far. It's got a title and it says, welcome, this app will help you name your pet. So what I'm going to do is save the current state of this code. So here I'm going to say created a basic code interface. Looks great so far. I like it. So I don't want to update anything. I just, if I ever mess up, I always want to be able to revert to this current state. Now let's go and see if we can add some more functionality. So here I'm going to add a input from the user. So now I want the user to give a message, like what kind of pet do you have? Now notice that as soon as I hit control S to save, automatically it's going to pop up here and it says, look, there's one pending change. So once I hit save, I can go back here to see what that looks like. So it says, what kind of pet do you have? Dog, cat, bird. I'm going to say dog and enter. Okay. So it entered it and here we can see that it saved it to a variable. So I like it so far, and I'm going to commit the current state of this code. So here I'm going to say added an input from the user. Let's go ahead and hit commit. So again, this is kind of like me just saving the current state of this code. Let's go back here. Let's add another update. So this time I'm going to add some name suggestions based on what they put in. I'm going to hit save. And then here you can see in source control, it came up. Now I don't need to commit this change before I test it. So let's go ahead and test this. So what kind of pet do you have? I'm going to say dog and then get a name suggestion. And how about naming your dog Luna? So I like the current state of this code. What I'm going to do is go in here and I'm going to say the input works. The suggestions are good. And I'm simply going to hit commit. Now, if I go to the source control graph, here I can see all of the changes that were made in each save or in each commit. So these were all the changes made here and here. Now here on my code, I can see that I'm getting some warning message. So it says I need to change the name of the file from code to code one or something. Just change the name. So let's just call this code one. Now when I do this, you can see that here in the source control, the changes were that code.py was deleted and code1.py was created. So again, what I'm going to do is to say renamed file to code1.py. Simply hit commit and there we go. So now we have this good state of this code. I like the current progress. I think it works well. So what can I do from here? Well, I can publish this code into something like GitHub. This is where I can publish it into either a public or a private repository. Now I have another whole video on how you can set up um, Git and GitHub with VS Code. So if you don't, if you haven't watched that video already, then I would recommend watching that one. But all I would do is I would simply hit publish branch. So this is going to publish the current state in the main branch. Now it says, do you want to publish this to a private or a public repository? 
I'm going to say public. Why not? So test already exists. So I'm, let me call this test one. So there we go. It's now going to be publishing to a public repository. So if I open on GitHub, we can see that my code is now going to be live here on GitHub. So this is all the code that I wrote. Now, if at any point I wanted to revert to an earlier state of the code, like something like this, I can always do that. All I would do is just pick the one that I liked, like this one. And then here, all I would do is check out. Once I do that, this is going to take me to an earlier state of this code. Now, if I wanted to go back to the original state, well, here, what I would do is click on checkout two and then check out to the original branch, which is this one. And this is going to be all of the different code. Now, here so far, I've been writing code in code1.py. Imagine that I want to create another file. Let's say that I call this file something like secrets.txt. And here I want to add something like my computer password. So my computer password is one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if I hit save, you'll see that on Git, automatically, it's going to catch that, look, I, you created a new file called secrets.txt, and it's saving the my computer password. Well, now, obviously, I don't want to be committing my computer password to a public GitHub repository. So what can I do? Well, if I go here to my main repository, I can create a new file and call this .gitignore. Now, a gitignore file just tells you, well, do you want to ignore any files? And I do, I want to ignore secrets.txt. If I hit save here, notice what's going to happen here. So let me hit save and automatically the secrets.txt file goes away. So if I was to make another commit message like added a dot git ignore and hit commit, and I can sync the changes with the branch. Basically, this means that I publish this to the GitHub repository. So this is the current state of GitHub. And if I hit sync changes, you'll see that now the .ignore file is going to show up. And there we go. So secrets.txt is ignored. And usually this is a very common strategy that people implement where they have some secret API keys. They don't want to include that in the code base. So they just create an environment variable or they'll create a file and just add it to the gitignore. Now let's go back to our storybook example. Now, so far, we like the current state of the story. However, maybe we want to introduce a plot twist. That means that we're going to add in some more text. We might actually change the structure of a lot of this earlier text and storyline. So when we start doing that, we'll see some new stuff that's going to start popping up. So we might want to change the structure of some current text. We might want to change a little bit of the storyline, a little bit of the lore, and we're going to add in some more stuff over here. And we can see that this is really going to impact the current progress that we've made so far. Now, is there a way that we can do this such that if at any point we decide that, look, we don't like this twist, we can just go back to the earlier state of this code. And the answer is yes, through the use of something that's known as a branch. So if you take a look at what happened so far, we built up this character. We said that this character is walking through a forest and then it sees a ghost. Now, the plot twist is that the ghost is her brother. So that is an alternate branch that we can take. If we want to just keep continuing on this, this is our main branch, right? So this is what it's going to look like. Now, all the changes that we'll make in the plot twist branch, is going to be completely isolated from the main branch. So this is all happening in the main branch. We can continue this main branch here. But if we wanted to try the alternate branch, then we can make all of our changes here. And then if we decide that, look, you know what? This, is, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Maybe the character doesn't need to be the ghost or the brother doesn't need to be the ghost. We can completely delete this uh, branch entirely. And we're not going to affect any of the changes that we have here from our main branch. So how does that look like from a coding perspective? Well. Here is our code, and we know that this code works. It's currently on our, on our main branch, and everything is working fine. There are no issues. What if I want to explore an alternative route? I want to maybe predict the name of a pet given their personality. Well, that's like introducing an entire plot twist to a story. Now, I don't want to make all of these changes in the main branch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second branch. So let's go here. And I'm going to say, create a new branch. I'm going to call this 
Name based on personality. Why not? So now I'm currently in a completely new branch. So if I type something here like test.py, you can see that in source control, uh, it's going to come up here test.py. And any change that I make over here is not actually going to impact the main branch. So for example, I can say created a new file called test.py. And if I commit this change and even publish this branch to the GitHub repository, it's not really going to matter because right now the GitHub repository is only looking or only showing the code from the main branch. And this is the main branch. And if I want to switch to the different branch that I just created, I can click here and there we go. Name based on personality. And that one has the test.py. So what I'm going to do is go in here and look at code one.py. So here I'm going to make a significant change to the code base. So let me do that. And I'm going to simply hit save. Now I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to say edited the code one.py and simply hit commit. Let's take a look at what that's going to look like. So if I refresh this page, it says personality pet name generator. Let's name your pet based on their personality. It doesn't really matter if um, it, the code works or doesn't work because it's actually not really impacting the code in the main branch. So I made a commit. Let's see if I can finish the rest of this code here. And I'm simply going to add that onto my code one.py. So let's do that here. And there we go. Let's open up our code to see if this actually works fine. So let's name your, let's name your pet based on their personality. It's magical. Pet is lazy. And then favorite color, I'm going to pick a random favorite color and then generate name. It says Merlin the chill. So I like the current state of this code. However, all of this code so far has been in a separate branch. So let's just commit this final change. So added confetti and snowflakes. Let's commit this and sync the changes with the branch. And if I take a look at the repository, I can see that there is a main branch that's pretty much untouched and there is a name based on personality branch. And this is where we made all of our different changes. Now let's go back to VS code to understand what happened. Now the extension that I'm going to be using is known as Git graph. So all you would do is just go here, click install. Once that's done, if you go to here to your source control tab, you can click on this icon and this will show you exactly what happened. So we were working on our main branch. All of these are commits that we made in our main branch. And then we thought, you know what? Let's try a different strategy. I want to predict the name of a pet based on their personality. So then we went on this separate branch, right? We were working on name based on personality. And we don't know if you want to commit this back into the main branch or not. For now, we're just working off of this separate branch. Now, once we're pretty happy with the progress, what we can do is submit something known as a pull request. So a pull request means that you're asking permission from the owner if it's okay to push all of the changes that you made in this alternative branch back into your main branch. That is what a pull request means. So here I submitted a pull request and I said, I want to merge all of the changes from name based on personality to the main branch. Now, right now I'm the only person working on this repository, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to approve these changes, but you can envision a scenario where you can have multiple people working on different branches. And there's a main branch and that's usually the one that's currently in production. And if you wanted to make a change, maybe you want to edit the code base, you want to um, try some stuff out and you see that everything works in your um, alternative branch. What you would do is you would submit a pull request and request the owner of that branch, if it's possible to merge your code from your branch into the main code base. So here I've submitted a pull request. And I'm simply going to create the pull request. And after that's done, it says that the merge has no conflicts with the base branch. So now I can merge this pull request in and confirm this merge. And once that's done, you can see here that automatically it's not going to fill up with the updated changes. And the reason for that is this happened on GitHub. 
right? It merged the branches on GitHub. So if I go to my GitHub page, click on test one, I can see that code one reflects the new updated pet name generator based on their personality. However, if I go to VS Code, here I know that I'm on my main branch. Um, if I click on code one, it's still the old code. So on GitHub, we made the pull request and then we merged it with the main branch. However, on VS Code, it's still not going to be reflected. And the reason is because it's only updated on GitHub. We still have to pull those changes down to our local VS Code. So all we would do is go to source control and then sync the changes with the branch. And then once that's done, we can go back here, open up code1.py, and we can see that now it reflects all the updated changes that we made. And if I go to source control, click on this graph, we can see exactly what happened. We were working on this branch, we created a separate branch, and then we simply merged this branch to the main. And that is the basic idea behind branches. Now that's it for this video. Thank you all for tuning in. If you want me to cover an even more advanced guide to Git and GitHub, then please leave a comment in the comment section below and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.